today, maxed out default risk mapping. Hello again, this is Martin North from Digital Finance Analysis. Well, and that is post covering finance and property news. Well, last week I ran a live show, and that show related specifically to the latest analysis on my household and postcode data sets driven by our surveys. We had a good show, lots of participation, lots of questions. But after the show, I had a number of people contact me saying, Well, you've shown us the maps for mortgage stress, but what about the maps for rental stress or investor stress or overall financial stress and defaults? There's a lot more information that we'd love you to share. Okay, well, I've taken that on board. And so over the next few days, I'm going to release a series of shows where I go into more detailed mapping. So we're going to start with the specific analysis relating to mortgage defaults. Now, this analysis is trying to understand what's going to happen over the next 12 months, the probability of default. And so we actually come up with the data around how many households are actually in default or likely to move into default over the next 12 months. And as you'll see shortly, this is a pretty important conversation to have. Before I get into that, just to tell you that in coming days, we're also going to look at the rental stress mapping. And then we're going to look at the investor stress mapping and then the financial stress mapping to tie the ribbon on the conversation. So that will then give you access to all of the information that we've done from our mapping. And just on that, it's worth revisiting our scenarios. Our best case is the Goldilocks zone where we see rates staying at 4.35% but falling in 2025. Inflation eases in line with RBA expectations. Wages rise fast so we don't get a recession and migration stays above average. The base case scenario, which is the one I've done the modeling off in terms of the default counts, is the base case. So we see a bit of a soft landing. Rates stay at 4.35% through 24. Inflation falls but then rises a bit later and stays above target until 2026. But we don't get a recession in Australia and migration begins to ease. There is also a worst case scenario, a nightmare scenario, where rates were to rise higher than 4.35%, mortgage rates perhaps above 7%, and stay high through 2025 along with inflation. Unemployment rises, wage growth stalls, and we get a recession locally, and rates ultimately are cut. Migration falls below average. But that nightmare scenario means more people will get into difficulty. As I say, I'm using the base scenario for my analysis of the modeling and feeding into my default modeling. Just as I start the show, now just to remind you, of course, that we run our core market model, and that's driven by our rolling surveys. Those surveys are running continuously, and each month we update the data sets. We can slice and dice the data in lots of different ways, and that allows us then to drill in to things like default or rental stress or whatever we want to look at. And let me just mention that when we're talking about stress, we use a specific definition. It's in cash flow terms, money in, money out. So I don't use a generic 30% of income or even taxable income but look at it in cash flow terms. And if households therefore have more outgoings, excluding one-off discretionary items and income, we define them as stressed. If they have a mortgage, they're in mortgage stress. If renting, they're in rental stress. Investors with cash flow pressures are identified as stressed investors. And we can also aggregate the data to estimate total financial stress as well. And we can talk about it in terms of percentage of households and also the count of households, I think the latter is better because it is the rule of big numbers. And that's where we're going to focus a lot of our attention over the next few shows. Oh, and by the way, the RBA published this quite neat chart, which shows that there is a spectrum of household financial stress from mild around budget pressures through to missing payments and ultimately to insolvency. And it's worth saying that at the peak of my analysis, we start at the mild end and then move across 
but we will also touch on the default question as well, particularly today. Now, just to start the conversation for those who missed the show, go back and check it if you want more detail, we should highlight that rental stress was high at 77.26% of all households in the rental sector, never been higher. Mortgage stress is just over half, 50.1%, compared with 32.9% back in February 2020. And that translates, in summary, to significant rises in many areas. So this is highlighted in yellow in the September 2024 period by the states, shown both in percentage terms and in yellow, meaning higher than last month, blue lower than last month as well as rental stress, stressed investors and financial stress. And briefly looking at mortgage stress, we highlighted that postcodes like 2170-2560, that's Liverpool and Campbelltown in New South Wales, as well as Wanneroo 6065 and Toowoomba 4350, and then Narrowarren 3805, back to New South Wales, Camden 2570, then Donnybrook 3064, and Tarnit, 3029, and Berwick and Harkaway, 3086, and then Ballarat were all on the list. And if we look at the default modelling, which is now what I want to spend some time on, we're looking here at the risk of default, and we show it both as a percentage of households and also the count of households. And what I've done here is to map the count of households and then demonstrated that through my mapping tool. So if we look, for example, at the count of defaults in and around the Sydney area, we can see there that Western Sydney is featuring overall, so there are more, particularly over towards Blacktown and Campbelltown, relative to the centre of Sydney. If we compare that then with Melbourne, we can see there that there are higher pockets in and around the centre of Melbourne and 3977, 3064 and 3030 are areas that we highlighted earlier. And they are the real hotspots in the number that risks default. And in fact, 3977 is the highest in the Melbourne area. If we then go across to Brisbane, It's interesting that we are seeing the Toowoomba area, 4350, but also areas around the Gulf Coast, 4207, showing up. And remember that the population density tends to be lower in and around Brisbane relative to, say, Victoria. And that is an interesting observation, which suggests that in some areas, default rates are going to rise quite significantly from where they are in those areas. If we jump across to Adelaide, Well, the overall counts are somewhat lower because the population density is somewhat lower. But there are also some areas like Mount Barker, which stands out, and areas in 5108 and 5114. In the west, in the centre of Perth, things aren't too bad. But if you go to the north and to the south, you start seeing the counts rising. And 6164 and 6122 as well as the areas to the north of Perth, up towards Wanneroo, are also showing higher levels of default. Point I want to make here is that Western Australia is not immune because of the recent home price rises. And they are actually containing some of the highest levels of default across the country, not from the current cycle, but from the previous cycle when people bought in the early and middle 2000s. Tasmania shows relatively low levels of default, but I would also highlight the low population density. And finally, the ACT, and we can see there that close to the centre, not too much to worry to him about. But if you look out into some of the more suburban areas, we do have default rates that are somewhat higher. So that gives you a bit of a flavour of the default story. Now, this is a projection over the next 12 months. If rates come down more significantly, then things get a bit easier. If things take longer to correct, things go more pear-shaped. 
So that brings us to the end of this show. Next time, check out my modeling relating to the rental stress mapping. This is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.